Welcome to Deep Dive into Cloud Provider for Azure. My name is Ernest. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft working on Kubernetes. And I'm here with uh, Andy to give you guys a deep dive about Cloud Provider on Azure. So Andy, why don't you introduce yourself as well? Hello everyone. My name is Andy John, and also from Microsoft. Um, I'm working on Azure Cloud Provider. Cool. So in this presentation, we're going to talk about our mission. Uh, we're going to dig into the implementation of the cloud provider Azure, some of our recent developments for Kubernetes 118 and 119 release, how we are validating Kubernetes on Azure. And we're also going to show you guys a small demo on Azure file-based NFS service. Uh, last but not least, we're also going to talk about what the next step is for Kubernetes on Azure and how you guys can get involved and start contributing. So our mission really is just to make Azure the best place where you can run your Kubernetes workload. Uh, over the past half year or so, um, we've invested a lot to ensure that our customers have the smooth experience when running their Kubernetes workload on Azure. And one of the work items I want to highlight is that we have taken steps to improve the test coverage and prevent regression introduced to our end users. Uh, more specifically, we now provide additional test jobs that are available for our contributors to run against their pull requests on Kubernetes core repository. Uh, we have pull request jobs and periodic jobs to validate Azure resources that are tightly coupled to Kubernetes, uh, such as Azure Disk, Azure File, and uh, load balancers. In addition to that, as more and more customers are onboarding their Windows workload to Kubernetes, we are also planning to add pull request jobs that runs end-to-end -end validations on Azure Windows clusters. So overall, we will continue contributing to Kubernetes transparently while ensuring that our existing and potential customers can run Kubernetes workload smoothly on Azure infrastructure. On a side note, um, some of you guys uh, might be wondering what happened to SICK Azure, and it is actually now a sub-project under uh, the SICK cloud provider. And we're active in the provider Azure channel in the official Kubernetes Slack org. So, um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on GitHub or Slack channel. We also have a mailing list, but we're not as active as um, we are on the Slack channel. And one of the projects that we've been working on over the past two years is to move cloud dependence logics from um, the core Kubernetes repository out of it or out of tree. And there are certain core components within uh, Kubernetes um, that depends on the implementation provided by us, the cloud provider. Uh, for instance, uh, storage provisioning and load balancers are two of the most obvious examples. And the reason why we're extracting these cloud logics to a separate project is because of the following. Um, first of all, we, we want to have a smaller code base, uh, which, will, which is going to be much easier for the core Kubernetes maintainers and the developers from the cloud providers to maintain. If you think about it, if there are 100 cloud providers for Kubernetes, it's not really scalable to have 100 cloud provider implementation living within the Kubernetes repository. So what Kubernetes did is that it creates a cloud provider interface that each cloud provider must implement. So this way, only the necessary logic is embedded within the Kubernetes code base. And all the external cloud dependent logics are implemented somewhere else. And second of all, with uh, separate projects, we can have release cycle independence to Kubernetes. So it's beneficial when we want to have, uh, we want to release a critical bug fix within the cloud controller manager. And um, we can release it quickly within a reasonable time frame instead of opening a pull request against the main Kubernetes repository, uh, cherry pick your commit to a release branch and then wait for a patch release. So in the next slide, um, we're going to talk about in depth. Uh, which Kubernetes core components are getting moved out of tree and which components aren't. So here's a 
very simplified architectural diagram of how Kubernetes works with Cloud Provider Azure. On the top, you have the component relationship between um, the Cloud Provider and the Kubelet and Kube Controller Manager. And for the Kubelet, you can think of Kubelet as the node agent that exists in each of your master and agent nodes. Uh, it is responsible for stuff like registering the nodes with uh, the API server, as well as managing the container runtime and fetching credential information to pull images from a private registry. And then you have the Kube Controller Manager, which contains a lot of controllers, and each controller has a reconciliation loop that reconciles for a specific Kubernetes resource. And based on the diagram, you can see that the Cloud Provider Azure sort of coexists between the Kubelet and the Kube Controller Manager, which add a lot of complexities during uh, our development. So after moving most of the cloud dependence logic out of tree, you're left with uh, three major interface uh, as shown below. Uh, first, uh, I want to talk about the external Cloud Controller Manager and Cloud Node Manager. Um, so for the Cloud Controller Manager, it contains all of the cloud-specific logics for Kubernetes operations, and it consists of three major controllers. First is the node lifecycle controllers, which basically reconcile individual nodes on your Kubernetes clusters. And then you have the service controller, which reconcile the service resource for Kubernetes, and it also helps you reconcile load balancer resource on Azure. And last but not least, we also have the route controller, which reconcile the route on Azure. And then you have the Cloud Node Manager, um, which basically is a daemon set deployed to your Kubernetes clusters, which essentially initialize new nodes by applying appropriate tents before becoming available for other pods to schedule to. And it also helps us uh, reconcile node IP as well as node label. And the next interface I want to talk about is the container storage interface, also known as uh, CSI. It's basically a standard for exposing external storage to containerized workload for, on Kubernetes. Um, before CSI, cloud provider like us will have to implement uh, individual storage plugins within Kubernetes. But now, instead of developing individual storage plugins within the core Kubernetes repository, you can now instead implement the CSI drivers specific to your source plugin. So now, um, currently, we have two main CSI drivers that we maintain actively. They are the Azure Disk CSI driver as well as the Azure File CSI driver. Uh, last but not least, there are there is the uh, external credential product provider. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Kubelet is responsible for fetching tokens to pull images from a private registry. And we realized that different cloud provider has their own implementation implementation of how they achieve it. So now that we have an external credential provider interface, cloud provider like Azure can now implement it and um, extract the logic in a separate project. So now with this external uh, credential providers, we can fetch tokens from uh, Azure Active Directory so that users don't have to provide credentials when pulling images from Azure Container Registry. So overall, the goal of moving all these things out of the tree is to make the development process more friendly and avoid uh, redundant logic within the core Kubernetes repository. So currently, um, the extracted logic for Cloud Controller Manager and Cloud Node Manager, um, they all live within the Kubernetes 6 org. Um, more specifically, they're living inside the Cloud Provider Azure projects. Um, currently, the status is in beta, and we're looking to move to GA soon. And for the two main CSI drivers, um, for Azure Disk CSI drivers, it is in beta right now. And it is available on Windows cluster as well, but it is in alpha. And the entry migration status is uh, beta for Azure Disk CSI driver. For Azure File CSI driver, um, it is in beta, and it is also in alpha for Windows clusters. And the entry migration status is alpha. And in terms of the external credential provider, it is not yet implemented. Um, there is a Kubernetes enhancement proposal merged, um, also known as a CAP 
but um, the, ex the actual interface is not yet implemented in within the core Kubernetes repository, so we're waiting for that. But once it is available, we will start working on it. Um, in addition to all the cloud provider related projects that I mentioned in the last slide, we also offer a variety of other open source projects, which allows you to seamlessly integrate their, your um, Kubernetes workload within Azure. Um, we provide a couple of ways to provision self-managed clusters on top of Azure infrastructures. Um, first, uh, we have the cluster API provider Azure, which is basically an implementation of cluster API for Azure. We also have we also offer AKS Engine, where you can provision self-managed Kubernetes clusters on Azure with ARM templates. Um, if you want to enable auto scaling, you can try out the cluster auto scaler on Azure. And if you want to um, if you want to allow your pods to access um, Azure resource with um, Azure Active Directory identities, you can also try out a pod identity. And if you want to mount any secrets from Azure Key Vault to your workload, you can try out Secret Store CSI drivers. And last but not least, if you want to mount um, Blob Storage as a file system to your pods, you can try out Blob View CSI drivers. And these are just some of the projects that we maintain. And if you want to check out more Kubernetes related projects, you can always check out the Kubernetes SIG organization on GitHub, as well as the Azure org on GitHub. Uh, uh, Andy? Yeah. Now we are going to do a quick go through of all the uh, major bug fixes and features in 1.18. Uh, so in 1.18, uh, in Azure File and Disk in three drivers, we have fixed uh, a few uh, bugs like uh, the uh, dangling tech issue, which would cause API throttling. Also, for the Azure File driver, we use the new mount library that prevents blocking of sensitive mount options. And uh, we have also introduced uh, use force detach for Azure Disk. I will introduce this feature uh, later. And also we have added the Azure Disk write accelerator support for the specific Azure VM skills. On the network side, we have also fixed a few issues like uh, concurrency issue in load balance equation. And we also have added the support using Azure network resources in different AD tenant and the subscription. And we also have added the support for single stack IPv6. And in credential provider uh, side, we have also added the support for private Azure Cloud. So uh, next in 1.19, uh, for the Azure Disk and the file entry drivers, we have uh, fixed some issues in the Azure File CSI translation, and we plan to uh, go better for the Azure File entry driver uh, Migration feature uh, go better in 1.20. And we also have added uh, Azure Share Disk support on load block. And uh, uh, the, share, the Share Disk could mix user to attach one disk to multiple agent nodes. And we have also added a tech support for Azure Disk and the file drivers. And uh, uh, for the Azure Disk in true driver to CSI driver migration, this feature just goes better in 1.19. And uh, uh, in, in the network side, we have also has fixed some issues like uh, public IP not shown uh, after signing public IP to Azure VMs. And uh, for the credential provider side, we have also fixed a, a bug uh, in poor image, uh, which, could, which could cause poor image error using Azure Manager, Azure Manager Identity. Okay, so next. Next, I'm going to talk about uh, the hot uh, disk attach detach issue in Azure Disk Driver. Uh, many customers may already hit this issue before. The main issue is that sometimes there's failure in detaching Azure Disk. The failure could be caused uh, in a few possibilities. For example, uh, Kubernetes Control Manager crash or restart during disk detach, Azure Disk Resource Provider crash, or even Azure VM crash. So disk detach failure uh, would happen with a certain possibility. Then when this issue happened, how do we mitigate this issue? Uh, we have worked out uh, two methods to uh, mitigate this issue. First, from Kubernetes side, we uh, would detach Azure Disk using dangling error. So disk could be uh, kept in attached state on node one, even pod is removed 
in certain condition. So with this feature, one pod is moved to node two, as a disk driver would trigger dangling error. And after a while, disk would be detached from node one. And uh, the feature is available in a few Kubernetes versions. And uh, second, from Azure Cloud Provider side, we have already switched to use to be detached setting to detach an Azure disk. Uh, that could force detach a disk in the future. And uh, sometimes detached disk uh, may fail in the middle, which would uh, turn VM into failed stage. Use to be detached setting uh, to detach a disk could make VM continue detached if former detached operation failed. That would also solve the detached issue. So these are the two methods to solve the disk detached issue. Uh, next, Ernest will go through how we test in Azure Cloud Provider projects. All right, thanks, Andy. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we have invested a lot in the testing infrastructures. And here, um, I'm going to really quickly go through how we were testing uh, Kubernetes on Azure infrastructures. Um, I want to talk about the test infrastructures. And we actually utilized the test infra from the main Kubernetes repo. And if you guys don't know, um, we use Prowl as the CI for running end-to-end um, -end validations on Azure. And Prowl is uh, basically a community uh, CI that is available for everyone to run tests on. And the general testing flow is something like this. It's very simple. Um, first, we build Kubernetes against a PR branch. Um, if the test is running against a PR, we will build Kubernetes against a PR. But if we're building against a release branch, then we will check out the release branch and then build Kubernetes from there. So we build Kubernetes, and then we'll push all the images and artifacts to Azure Storage or Azure Image, uh, Azure Container Registry. Uh, with that uploaded, uh, we'll provision uh, Kubernetes clusters with AKS Engine that points the images to the custom built Kubernetes just um, that we built in from step. So now we have a Kubernetes clusters running with custom Kubernetes version. Now we can run various validations against the clusters. And that's how we sort of build the clusters and run the validations against um, whatever changes uh, are checked in. And the test results for pre submit jobs and periodic jobs are available publicly. You can check out uh, test script slash provider Azure. If you guys don't know, task is simply a dashboard for the public to you know, check out the test results from Prowl. And you can check out the historic test uh, failure rate. And also, you can very easily see which test cases are flaky. Uh, it's a very beautiful dashboard. And here's a screenshot of um, some of the pull requests. Uh, that we opened. And uh, as you can see, there are a couple of Azure related PR jobs that we run. Um, for example, here we are running conformance tests against uh, AKS engine clusters. And we also run uh, tests that are related to Azure storage. In here, uh, we, we are running Azure disk end to end validations on an Azure AKS engine clusters. And also, we're running the NTN validations on the VMSS clusters. And as I mentioned earlier, we're starting to invest a lot in uh, Windows testings. So as you can see, we are running the same validations, but on a Windows clusters. And the same thing, uh, and we apply the same set of uh, cluster configurations on Azure file as well. And in the future, we're planning to add more and more um, PR jobs to make sure that um, we are gathering all the test signal from day one. And here's a second example of, um, of a pull request from Azure Disk CSI driver. And so yeah, um, it is using the same CI as the last slide. But instead, we are running end-to-end -end tests for the Azure Disk CSI driver. And we're actually running the end-to-end -end validations against multiple cluster configurations. So here we are running the end-to-end -end test on Windows clusters, on an AKS engine clusters with single availability zone, as well as uh, clusters with 
multiple availability zones. And last but not least, we're also testing the migrations. So what that means is that we're trying to migrate the entry um, Azure disk driver to CSI drivers so that users who are using the entry drivers um, can seamlessly transition to use um, Azure Disk CSI drivers. And we make sure that all the PRs that check into these Kubernetes repositories um, are passing before we merge them to ensure that we have a consistent test signal against the master branch. And with that, I'm going to give it back to Andy for the demo. So next, I'm going to uh, demo the uh, NFS driver. So let me share my screen first. So could you see my screen now, Ernest? Yeah. OK, that's great. Uh, so NFS volume on Azure Fire is now, uh, on Azure Fire is now in prior preview, and uh, uh, here the page to uh, register the Azure Storage NFS preview program. This page uh, pr actually provides two NFS services. One is Azure Fire based, it's based on uh, 4.1, and another is uh, Another is block storage based. So there are four different workloads. And we have already integrated the Azure Fire based NFS service with Azure Fire CSI driver. So, so if you go to the Azure Fire CSI driver page, oh, okay, let's skip it. Anyway, if you go to the Azure Fire uh, CSI driver page and uh, go to the NFS session, and you can see uh, we have already supported the NFS. And uh, now it's in uh, other stage, and only uh, East US region is available now. And uh, to use this feature, uh, user uh, first need to register at your installed NFS program. So yeah, this page. And another uh, one got confirmation from the Azure Storage team. Uh, we need to register allow NFS file shares feature under your subscription. I've set it down. Uh, uh, we need to install CSI jar first. So currently, only master version uh, is supported. And then uh, user need to create an Azure storage account uh, first. We only support to bring your own storage account uh, in the first version. And uh, user need to create a premium AOS storage account and uh, specify the storage uh, account kind as file storage. And also set the uh, enable HTTPS traffic only as false because uh, NFS uh, in if use another protocol, and the uh, user also need to select virtual network of agent nodes uh, in firewalls and the virtual networks. So to save time, I've already uh, created a, an Azure Storage account. So here the Storage account's name is uh, Cube Account Demo, and let's click into it. And uh, in the firewalls and the virtual networks, I've already uh, select one subnet of the uh, of the AKS cluster. So uh, yeah, let me show you. So here is the AKS cluster. It has two nodes and the version is 1.18.4. And uh, to use this NFS uh, feature, uh, we, we need to create a storage class first. So I have already prepared a storage class. And name is Azure Fire. Dash CSI and it used the uh, Azure Fire CSI driver. And I have already specified the storage account created before. The name is KubeCon demo and the uh, FS type specified as NFS. So we use Kube control to apply the storage class. And then we can use this in, uh, in NFS driver. So I will show you an example to create a WordPress application based on the NFS driver. The, the step is quite simple. We only, uh, we only need to, uh, first we only need to add a repo and then use the help install to install the uh, WordPress application. We just specify the storage class and specify the uh, persistent volume size. Okay, so uh, two parts are in creating stage. So, uh, so the 
Uh, there are two parts. Uh, one part is MariaDB. Actually, it's using Azure Disk to provision a PVC, and another is uh, WordPress front end web page. It will uh, create a uh, NFS file share. So now it's in a uh, creating stage. And here is the uh, PVC you can see. Uh, actually, I've already created a one uh, to, to demo because it could save time. And uh, you could see that two, two PVC is created. One is using a uh, default starter class, and actually it's using Azure Disk. Another is uh, using NFS a file driver. And uh, let's go to the start account. And click into the file shares. You could see that a new uh, NFS file share is uh, created and uh, its protocol is NFS. So finally, uh, you will get an, a working uh, a working WordPress application, and uh, it has a uh, public IP because we use a load balancer. So finally, a user could use this public IP to access the WordPress application. So, yeah. So here is the WordPress application based on the NFS driver. Okay. So let's go back to the uh, slides. So uh, here is our future plan. Uh, we are still working on the uh, cloud provider moving out of tree. It's now in better, and we are we are working on to make it a GA in the future. And also we are working on Azure AKS integration with out of tree cloud provider and the CSI drivers, and also trying to work out first version of external credential provider for Azure. Besides that, we are also working on Azure cloud provider new features. For example support sharing the uh, same IP by multiple services, Azure Stack support. For the CSI driver part, we will support broad-based uh, NFS service too. And also we will uh, support Azure Fire Snapshot, detach disk using Dangry Alert support on CSI driver. And also for Windows CSI support, we will move to beta in the future. And for the testing, uh, we will switch from AKS Engine to CAPC uh, for pre-submit and uh, periodical jobs. Yeah, thanks, Andy. And um, yeah, uh, contributions are definitely encouraged. And here's how you can get involved. Um, you can join our Azure, uh, Azure Cloud Provider community meetings every other Mondays at 6 p.m. Pacific time. And here's the link to our community call. And you can also check out the second link for our meeting notes. And for all the code owners, you can check out this GitHub link to check out who owns which part of the cloud provider Azure code. And obviously you can always uh, reach out to us and ask any questions on the Kubernetes Slack at the provider Azure channel. And last but not least, if you want to, you know, uh, create your first pull request to contribute to Kubernetes. Um, you can also check out this GitHub link to grab in first issues and just start coding. And yeah, um, that will conclude our presentations and I'm looking forward to answering all your questions. Okay, thank you everyone.